This week, we have a special bonus episode for you featuring Jared Miller. Jared is our collaborative pianist for Heritage Choir, and you've heard him playing in several episodes, as well as playing the theme song to our new podcast, which releases next week. Jared has been invaluable with his work transcribing and creating promotional materials for Heritage Choir. This project couldn't have launched without his support and his help, and I'm so grateful to everything that he does. Jared and I met back at St. Olaf when we were in college, and I was struck by his, his talent and his passion for collaborating. When you work with Jared, you don't just get a fantastic collaborative pianist, you get someone who listens to what you're doing and they say, what if we took this here? What if you brought up this line while I brought up this harmony? He has such an attention for detail and he's a phenomenal pianist. Some of my favorite memories of college are when I would hand him literal stacks, I mean stacks, of musical theater scores. And I would say, Jerry, do you want to sing? And he would just sit there and sight read, like the monster pianist that he is. He's a phenomenal human being, and we are lucky to have him be a part of Border Crossing. This episode you're going to hear features Jared interviewing his parents. It's rare to see Jared step away from the piano, but it's really fun to see his parents celebrate who he is and all that he does. Enjoy. Hi, um, I'm Jared Miller, and I am the collaborative pianist for Heritage Choir. And today I'd like to welcome my parents, Irma and Dave Miller. Welcome, guys. Thank Hello. you. Hello. How's, uh, how's the weather over in Seattle? They're tuning in from Seattle, for those of you in Minnesota. Yeah, we're on Vashon Island. Um, the weather's been nice. It's been in the 80s, which is rare for Seattle. No That's rain. It's mm -hmm. like a cold day in San Diego. I know. Um, I know I've talked with you guys a little bit about this in the past, but I'm, I'm excited to hear more in depth about like what music means to you guys. So my first question today was, uh, what role did music play in your household growing up? What kind of music, if any, do you remember your parents playing for you when you were kids? Well, for me, um, I don't really remember my parents listening to the music. Hmm. Uh, when they did, your grandfather always played classical. Okay. Um, and your grandmother would play Perry Como. <laughs> Perry Como, really? <laughs> Perry Como, that was, that was her thing. Um, but apart from that, I grew up with no music in the house. Interesting. Yeah, not until I figured out radio in the car. Okay. Yeah. And, and then, you, you took piano lessons as a kid, right? I did. Um, was that your choice or did your parents kind of push you to do that or? I don't remember. Okay. I don't remember. I, I think I wanted to because I've always liked piano. Mm -hmm. um, well, I must have been seven, eight, somewhere around there. Because I know it was okay. when we were in San Diego because I grew up in LA until right. six, I think, five or six. Um, I didn't practice for very long take mm -hmm. piano for very long. I think it was only like three years, maybe okay. three, four years. Yeah. And then I got tired of it and my parents didn't push me to play more. So, yeah. <laughs> so now there's you. <laughs> right. Now there's me. <laughs> there's you. Mm -hmm. And what about, what about you, dad? Uh, music was played in my house all the time. Uh, my mom uh, was kind of into, you know, Saturday night fever, mm -hmm. BGs and disco, stuff like that, Donna Summer. Good stuff. Good My stuff. dad uh, was very much into Motown, oh. Temptations, and Smokey Robinson and the Miracles. Uh, those were big ones. Uh, a group called War, which was uh, oh, also very good too. Um, and uh, yeah, we listened to whenever it was time to work. We listened to music. So my parents would put on music, and uh, my mom liked the uh, her favorite album was uh, Best of Bread. Best of Bread. Group called okay. Bread. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I think Drake listens to Bread. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think so. It sounds like one yeah. of his groups. I, uh, I listen to Bread. <laughs> no, uh, I listened to it a lot when I was younger. So, you know, but it's, uh, you know, we, we, we did a lot of uh, work, you know, when it was Saturday, mm -hmm. cleaned up the house day and we had, you know, chores to do. Um, my dad would put on Motown and kick up the mood. I never knew that your parents were into that, like... Which is a good segue into the next question. Like, how did your musical taste change from what you were exposed to as kids? I know the answer. But know the answer. <laughs> well, for me, um, I was talking to your dad earlier about it. Mm -hmm. um, since I didn't grow up with music in the house, um, I had kind of 
came across it through like TV shows or whatever that mm. I would watch. And for me, I, my earliest memory of really enjoying a band or something was like the Partridge family <laughs> and the Osmonds. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of how I started. Um, Interesting. Kind of saying, you know what, music is pretty cool, and kind of branching out from there. Hmm. And of course, after it, you know, knowing that there's more things out there, then I started exploring. And with every age change, you know, mm -hmm. school and whatever, um, then that's when I ex started experiencing different genres of music. And I've never really been stuck with one kind. It kind of just depends on my mood and what calls to me, you know? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um, for me growing up, uh, you know, we used to try and record stuff off of the radio, but probably the first uh, music that I can remember that really stuck with me that was different than anything I'd listened to growing up was uh, Sticks, Pieces of mm -hmm. Eight. Uh, and that album and the renegade in particular um and uh, blue collar man which also was part of that album um yeah i i got into music right around that you know mid 70s to late 70s i really didn't listen to much music when i was younger so okay. um, yeah and now you listen to what do both of you listen to primarily now <laughs> or a lot of now i mean primarily is not a well, the funny is that I never really grew out of the listening to the radio stage. Yeah. Um, even though I did buy the tapes and the CDs, you know, to have my collection, I've always been more of a radio person. Mm. That's how I learn what new groups are out there. Just and to like hear whatever, right? Just to hear, yeah. Mm. Um, so I kind of listen to everything, you know. Um, depending on, you know, what I'm doing that day, sure. or what it, the mood of the weather that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's just how I am. What nice. It's going to be open like that. I, I listen to a lot of hard rock. Yes, you do. <laughs> I listen to a lot of, uh, as you would call it, screamo. Uh, but I listen to a lot of uh, hard rock. Um, groups like Stone Sour, Five Finger Death Punch. Judas Priest, I, as your shirt says. Judas Priest, that's right. So listen to Judas Priest. Um, Queens Reich. Uh, I grew up on all of those. Ronnie James Dio. Dio was very big. So mm -hmm. um, I really got into more into music in the early 80s when, you know, True. the kids were everywhere. And I never funny. heard of any of those groups growing up. That's fascinating. Until I met your dad. Yeah. Yeah. And I that was, was in. Yeah. It was interesting to hear dad talk about that his parents listen to Motown and funk because that's always what I associate with you mom <laughs> like that's more your type of music and discovered it yeah um I I think it was because Rebecca had an older sister mm. and she listened to like Motown and funk and I'm like I really love this stuff, it's good stuff. <laughs> and then I just mm. dug in and devoured it and just Super loved cool. it I know, nice. but I, I like rap. I like the early rap too. You know, the mm -hmm. Run DMC, the Sugar Hill Gang, Salt and know. Pepper, those types of people. Yeah, well, yeah, I like Salt and Pepper. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I just I always think about how kind of trying to talk back about like musical heritage or just like your own heritage or what you consider that to be. Like, you know, we're I'm half Mexican because of mom's side and. Um, but I know like we didn't necessarily do a lot of like culturally Mexican things necessarily. Um, but that was something that obviously I've <laughs> gone into more since, yeah. since high school. And, and that's partly because of music. Cause mm -hmm. when I discovered the Granados Goyescas and the recordings of Alicia de la Rocha playing them, that kind of like opened my eyes to that other world of classical mm -hmm. music that I hadn't known before and realizing that like I'd always that I started to feel a connection to that music in a way that I didn't necessarily right away with other types of classical music mm -hmm. and you know like that moment for me was really defining because that 
opened the door for me to explore that side of myself and that side of both my musical taste and my like you know biological heritage and mm -hmm. that was that's just something I think about often about how like I wonder what I would be doing now if I hadn't discovered the Goyescas in high school yeah. just simply by accident like I was given that book and then here we are <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah I think for me but having your grandparents be from Mexico City and when they moved to Los Angeles, which is where mm -hmm. I was born, they didn't speak English. Right. And I didn't speak English until I was like six, five or six is when mm -hmm. I started, when I learned. Um, and I think their focus was to fit into America, sure. you know, yeah. learn the language, learn their culture, live like the Americans do. Mm -hmm. So I think they didn't raise me with with that heritage, you know, the background yeah. of being Mexican and what Mexicans do, you know, like the food and stuff like that. Your yeah. grandmother cooked Mexican food, but she didn't make a big deal about this is like a family. Our people, yeah. You know? Yeah. Like so, this is a family recipe passed down and exactly. sort of thing. Yeah. And not until I got married and started cooking did I start asking her, well, you know, well, you used to make this dish and how come mm -hmm. you don't make it anymore? And I sh and then I thought, oh, well, I need to learn this stuff because she's not going right. to be around forever. So, but I it's think in a I, sense you discovered yeah, it later I, too. Yeah, I discovered it things mm -hmm. later. Um, yeah, so I, I, it's kind of sad. But you still discovered it, like it's. Yeah, I don't think you stopped discovering. Yeah, it's a part of you. It's a you find, you find different times and different things mm -hmm. and different influences that come in. It's like mm -hmm. seeing a movie that you didn't like, first time you saw it, and then seeing something in it completely different when you see it again. There's there's much to that. There, it's a type of creativity. So, mm -hmm. I think it's great that you have embraced your culture um something that i never never did or even felt like i needed to growing mm. up um i didn't feel all that left out um i did go to mexico every year right during the summer uh for three months two three months um so it was it's a shock you know it's definitely a different lifestyle mm -hmm. um, over there than it than it is in the United States, um, but since I had that every year, I didn't feel left out. So yeah, like much, it was missing, you know, like it was mm -hmm. missing in my life. Um, even though you, your grandparents didn't follow any traditions at home, uh, I still dipped my toe in it over there, and having yeah. you embrace it and look for it has been pretty cool um you know we have that even the mex looking for the mexican cookbooks mm -hmm. you know has been fun um and you when you find a, a musician that you like then you know you send it to me and then i start looking and, and playing them and saying oh you know i really like this and mm -hmm. that's been kind of nice that you and i have that that bond yeah if, if I could pick one thing to say that like felt like it was part of Mexican culture growing up, it was having like the specific dishes that we would have at certain holidays. Like, mm -hmm. um, I mean, not even holidays, but like the Albon de Gas and the Salpicon and um, my, the Bacalao for, right. for Christmas. Yeah. yeah. Like those, those dishes felt like, okay, this is a little bit of what I assume <laughs> like, Mexican culture is like because I know that food and passing that down is like a big it's a big part of it and mm -hmm. um, those those specific dishes those three coming to mind like felt like a big deal when they were made like oh it's you know it's salpicon week we're preparing for it's literally summer. a week we'll yeah, leave that during the summer because it's yeah. A, yeah I know and you know bringing out the big plate that was as big as I was and yeah. you know setting it was just so presentational and Mm -hmm. I feel like that's something that I will do with my family some, or even like, you know, with my friends here at some point, once I get a table. Um, mm -hmm. 
yeah, but like those, those things for sure. And then when I discovered that Anna Kennedy book, like, like you said, that's been a cool thing to get to explore together. Cause I'm seeing recipes that maybe I've seen on shows or like in, um, specific restaurants and things, but hearing, seeing how people in specific towns all over Mexico made them and yeah. how they're, it's like a compilation of the oral traditions that she wrote down so that they're not lost. Like, mm -hmm. it's cool that we can kind of create those ourselves, even though we didn't necessarily have them mm -hmm. from the start. I was trying to think when we started actually celebrating Thanksgiving because they don't have that in Mexico. Right. So my grandparents had no oh, idea. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember vaguely asking your grandmother, well, why, why, we? Are, we having, what, what's, why are we having this holiday? You yeah. know, well, tell me about this holiday. And she couldn't, she was like, I don't know, you know? Never heard of it. And I was like, well, my friends have this kind of food for lunch. Why do I have different food? <laughs> You know, uh, and so I remember asking her those questions, and then she was just like, "Fine, you know, I'll make you a peanut butter and jelly." <laughs> you know, and so that was kind of how I think I started understanding that there was other tradition. I know I remember, like that was a big thing for me too. Growing, like I know I didn't eat, I haven't started eating bacalao until the last like ten years, probably, but yeah. probably more recent than that yeah. I've acquired a taste for it but I still remember it always being there like that was when yeah. people say like well what do you eat at Christmas Eve or Christmas <laughs> dinner I would always be like oh it's this super salty like you fish. know shredded fish and there's capers and peppers and there everyone would look at me like exactly that's not a Christmas dish Jared and I'm no. like, it is in my house so you are an artist dad yeah. father and um you listen to music while you draw a lot, correct? How, what role has music played in your creative process? Cause I, I know from like growing up in the house, seeing you draw, like mom and I and Drake would always be like, wow, we can hear his headphones from across the house. But I don't know that I've ever talked with you about like, how does listening to that music help you get in the headspace to create art? Um, for me, it's about focus. Hmm and the music tends to calm me down. Uh, we joke about it because I can go to sleep to hard rock yeah. and metal. I can, I can just close my eyes and I'm, I'm, I'm going, I can't listen to jazz. Hmm. Jazz amps me up and makes me um, nervous. And it's Interesting. Uh, Miles Davis, there was an album your grandfather played once of Miles Davis and it's, it really, really um, hmm. put me on edge. And um, I don't like to be on edge. I prefer yeah. more relaxed. And music for music for me is about focus, setting the tone, creating the mood. Uh, usually, I'll pick something that I really know. That's my go-to. I'll, uh, you know, when I sit down to get something done, I can dial everything out. Hmm. And um, yeah, you do have a laser focus when you're yeah, working. Uh, um, and, but that focus also extends to other things in terms of creativity. So, you know, with me, the music is, is just has allowed me to flip a switch. Mm -hmm. So it really is like a switch. Um, it allows me to get, just get to do whatever I need to do. If I'm working, if I'm outside doing, you know, yeah. yard work, um, point me in a direction, put on my headphones, turn them up and I will get the job done probably twice as fast as I should. <laughs> and I just kind of get into it and I just, I let it, I let it take me like a wave. So. Mm -hmm. um, how was it for you guys to raise a musical child? Like, and how did I get started with piano? You know, like, how did you guys, what's my origin story? <laughs> you grew up with different music, different types of music. Um, but you were four years old and... We had a piano at the house that nobody played. You weren't much of a talker when you were younger. I'm still not. <laughs> but you you wanted to play the piano. Hmm. And I thought you were too young. Um, I thought it was just a passing phase for you in the beginning. And we made a deal with you because you were a smart kid. And we're like, okay, well, if you're still interested when you're five, 
then we'll talk about getting you a teacher and and all that and um sure enough you were still interested found you a teacher um you loved it for many years and then like a lot of kids when you hit teenage preteen teenage years the dreaded teens. um you didn't want to do it anymore i didn't want to practice i think is what it was uh, Cause I, yeah, I you wanted know. things too fast. You yeah. already wanted to know it and learn yeah. it. And um, it, your teacher at the time, Claudia, mm -hmm. um, was trying to teach you to memorize, which is something that you've never. This uh, never been my strong. Yeah, yeah, you've never really been. And she had a process of how she wanted to teach you, and you didn't want to follow that. So we went through some really tough times with you and practice and mm -hmm. um having and i had to sit there with you and kind of just remind you that in you were green chair. very talented you know and that in order for you to be as good as wolfram you had to follow the steps you know mm -hmm. and i had to remind you that he did the same thing too and you know he before he would start playing he went through a process of scales and exercises and the same thing for like two hours before yeah. he he was methodical yeah about he really warmed pieces. up his hands he before he started because yeah. he was a composer right his, yeah um so isn't he related to charles trenet isn't we find that out yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so i was brief sidebar i was briefly related to the composer of la mer Yep. which people know the English translation from Finding Nemo from Beyond the Sea, which is pretty cool. I always tell people that. Yeah. 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 You, uh, and I think that's part of also what you saw too, is that Wolfram would go and he would practice for hours on end, just small, tiny pieces yeah. of the music. Um, and again, you, you saw it being done and you wanted to be able to do it. Um, your teen years, yes, were were interesting, but uh, well, I'll say your mom was the one who who was about as hardcore as you could get, and saying, "No, you're gonna do this, and you're gonna finish practicing, and you're gonna you're gonna finish learning the basics that you need to, to do, um, and then do what you will, and then you'll be able to do to do whatever you want to do." Mm -hmm. I pushed you because I wasn't pushed, and as I as you get older, you realize yeah. the things that you missed out on if you had stuck with it, you know? Because I could play the piano. Right. I was good at it. I was a memorizer. I had a heck of a time learning the notes. I'm, not, I'm the complete opposite of you mm -hmm. in that regard. Um, but I kind of wish that my parents would have said, you know what, you've got some talent. Just stick with it get through the hump, keep going. Yeah. But instead, you know, it was a, all right, you want to quit? Fine. <laughs> you know, I don't have to take yeah. it to piano, to piano lessons anymore. Um, you, none of you, neither one of you were raised yeah. to quit. I mean, you just, it's not really in you. That's not how you, it's not how we brought you up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, you fail because you didn't quite get there. That's one thing. And that's, it's that's not because way you more try, acceptable. You know? Sure. The only mm -hmm. thing that wasn't acceptable to us was was not trying. Uh, not trying means you never made the effort at all, and and uh, that was a shame to us mm -hmm. guys growing up. And so for you, growing up, um, yeah, you you wanted this stuff, but you weren't. I don't think you were. Um, you weren't pushy about it, and you weren't, um, you know, like rude about the way that you you wanted to learn everything so quickly. I think you were just frustrated that you weren't there yet and you were at that stage of, of you know playing that yeah you know you you have to go through in order to get to where you are now and the cool thing with you too growing up musically is that you tried different things like you did jazz mm -hmm. in middle school you know and band the keyboardist right drumline yeah drumline um so you were kind of exposed to other mm -hmm. types and then that kind of helped you i think pinpoint what your favorite yeah music to play and then any of yeah. connecting with choir 
and what happened there. And mm -hmm. yeah, that kind of launched my collaborative, collaborative. interest for sure. Mm -hmm. Not that like jazz and drumline weren't, but like in a different sense, you know, ensemble playing versus right. Yeah. I think it's important to stick your toes into different things because mm -hmm. then that's how you figure out what you like and what you don't like. And yeah. 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 I think you're and, perfect. I think you're well rounded. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> now I know it was, it hasn't always been like flowers and easiness with me and music, but how did you kind of in the later, the last like eight years, how has it been for you as my parents? Like, how was it when I told you I wanted to go to college for music? And how has it been being on the other side of like your kid saying he wants to do music professionally? And yeah. Well, <laughs> we've always wanted you guys to do what you love, no matter what it was. Mm -hmm. Yep. And especially with your father being an artist and knowing the type of lifestyle for freelancing yeah artists can you know have um we wanted you to have kind of like a backup you know so plan. a plan like mm -hmm. we know we know you're talented but sometimes that's not enough you sure. know um so we kind of wanted you to choose two careers so you know I just in case yeah just but we didn't, we never said, oh, that's crazy. You're never going to do anything in music. Just, you know, do it for fun or whatever. We mm -hmm. didn't do that. No, we would never have and, allowed that. And when you told us about, you know, you wanted to study that in college, we were okay with that. But I did, I did definitely want you to have a backup just in case. You yeah. Know? I wanted you to be aware of what of other things that is so that you you could continue to enjoy it and as long as you continue to enjoy it mm -hmm. doing um being a musician as a career then then that was great but if it would but if at some point you weren't you know we didn't want you to feel um that you missed out on anything or a level of regret um mm -hmm. you know i can't we had, remember we had many conversations about backup plans and, and just thinking about where you were and what you were doing and preparing yourself. And uh, I don't think you, know. you ever had a backup plan because you were so focused. I had my, I had my mindset. This is from, what I'm doing. You're not going to stop. From soft, pretty much like sophomore year of high school. I was like, this is my future. Yeah, it was, yeah. We, we tried. I mean, we, we tried having you be interested in other things just in case, you know. Soccer was but really exciting. No, you were, you were difficult in that. Soccer. Yeah. 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 yeah, soccer. I'm a, a professional soccer player. Born athlete, as you know. Um, yeah. No, you, you, you showed that that's what you wanted to do. Um, so we didn't feel that it was, it wasn't our place in essence, to um, to dampen your dream. Mm -hmm. It's your dream and your dream was, you know, was was big and bold and exciting and colorful, just like the music. And I think that that's a big part of what, you know, what has made you what you are today. Mm -hmm. um, and then giving you the opportunity, you, you know, no shouldn't be part of your vocabulary. Talent shouldn't be part of your vocabulary. Um, you know, I teach that in art. As you know, you work with me, yeah. and that's one of the things that I think you you have always embraced very, very strongly. Is that there is a way, you got to find it. And if you're directing somebody, you I, I see that in you. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting. It, it, it's what you know blows your mom and I away every time we see you. Every time we sit down to watch one of your performances, um, you know it, it's. Mm -hmm what makes it go for us so yeah it's been really nice seeing you progress in your field and mm -hmm. to see what you've accomplished we're very proud thank you yeah. i'm glad it's it's cool hearing like your side because i was thinking about this last night in preparation for today about how like being a musician and being the person that's playing all the time i don't always notice my own progression I think in, I've talked to you before about how like I feel like I plateau and then 
it takes like one big project for me to feel like I've bumped up in skill level, but it must be different having, you know, listened for what I was it 20, 20 years now that I've played like yeah. hearing and thinking about like what I sounded like day one when, you know, Miss Westland was pointing to notes and I would just pick a random note and be like, that's what does this for me. Middle um, C, right? Middle C, right? To now. Yeah. Like, like I obviously know that I've progressed from that day, but sometimes it still feels like, I don't know. It's, it's a weird yeah. sort of thing in my brain where I'm like, I feel like I'm not progressing, but I know that I am obviously. We notice it more now than when you were home because when you were home, you hear it all the time. Every day, you know, you don't hear it as much. But when you went off to college, mm -hmm. um, and then you would come home, and then you would play. It was like, wow, this is really—he's really learning, you know. <laughs> he's really doing. Yay! It. Yay! You know? Yeah. Um, before for you was, um, you were very skilled at the technical part of playing piano. Yeah. And I think uh, Miss West, Miss Westland's thing with you also was to put feeling into your music which was hard for me which was yeah. hard for you um yeah and even in high school i think too um there were some pieces that were beautiful and but your instructors or whatever at the time were just like you've got you've got the notes down jared but i'm just not feeling it you know yeah. and i really but, didn't open up emotionally until college uh, not until college and when you came back from that first semester we could tell hmm. that you were really listening to your teachers and they were getting to you, you know, yeah. to understand what they wanted you to bring out in the music. Mm -hmm. And and even, you know, your, when we went to your first recital, it was like, oh my God, I couldn't stop crying. I was like crying through the whole concert. <laughs> I remember you said yeah. you were holding your breath because I didn't tell you that I'd memorized two pieces. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, you went out and... Yeah put out sheet music and I was like dying. I like grabbed your dad's hand. I'm like, there's no music out there. He memorizes. Oh my God. He does not like to memorize. I was like, <laughs> I was panicking. Yeah. yeah. Those, like those two particular pieces, I felt like I just had to. <laughs> yeah. I don't like it when you do that. You freak me I know. out. I know. <laughs> Forgot to tell you about that. <laughs> um, yeah. No, it's, it's hmm. very cool. Now watching you play is, is, uh, it's a moment of bliss. I mean, it's amazing to watch you play uh, whenever we get to see you play uh, and even listening and even, you know, small stuff that you did for us, you know, your little mini album and stuff like that. I have four things on my phone, mm -hmm. iTunes. One of them is Jared. The other is Stone Sour, <laughs> Five Finger Death Punch. <laughs> I'm glad I made the cut. <laughs> James Dio. So those are, those are the ones that. Where that's are the you? Stuff are one or five? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, well, it's alphabetical. It's yeah. alphabetical. So, okay. but when I need a moment, I can sit back and I can listen to those. Hmm. Those, you know, that's that's what works. That's what's exciting. That's yeah. what's exciting about you growing up.